Hello everyone and welcome back to Dandelion Lessons um, and I would like to talk more about my story and some thoughts about drawing and um, I guess I would like to start with um, talking about what happened shortly after I started to draw and paint and um, I told you that story in the last video um, but what I didn't tell you was that um, maybe a couple months after I started, I had been keeping a sketchbook, sort of like this, full of my drawings and paintings, and I had been showing them to friends, and I was so excited about it. I even had shared some of it on Facebook and um, shared it with some of the people I, I worked with. Um, and I had just, shortly after I started, um, got a new job at a local church with some just wonderful people. It's a small church. And um, I basically um, showed some of the people at the church and they were having an art fair and um, in, in town and the church, um, one of the members of the church was putting her work out at the fair um, and she asked me if I would like to join her and and there was no no cost to it or anything It was very generous and she was already going to be setting up and so I um, I decided to do that and um, That day I had some little cards made up of my artwork and stuff and that day a lovely woman that owns a very wonderful art gallery in town um, stopped by where we were and um, saw my, my my paintings and asked if I was selling them anywhere and I said no, <laughs> you know, because I wasn't. And so she said, well, why don't you come see me at, at my gallery? And so I, um, I did. I took a few things in to show her. And she told me that she wanted uh, to represent my work locally and um, have my work for sale. And I was just flabbergasted. I mean, I, I really didn't even feel like I deserved it. And so um, I did take her some work and they sold um, fairly quickly. And a few months later, um, I had been bringing her more work and stuff, and she had mentioned that she would like to give me an exhibition at her gallery. And so, um, but a year and a half after that, I, I worked truly night and day to, to create a body of work for that exhibition. And it was called On a Wing. Um, and I'll leave a link to the um, exhibition website so you can take a look at it if you want to. Um, it was a remarkable experience and many, many of my friends and even my family flew in from far away and drove in and it was quite a celebration just to be with everybody in, in my community and all of that. And, and my work did really well. I, I, I think I had 53 pieces in the show and I, I want to say like 35 sold that night and that, just, that was just unbelievable to me. Um, but... At the same time, you know, I still felt like such a beginner and it, it just felt so hurried and um, like I didn't really even know my own voice yet, you know. It, uh, so when I say it all happened really quickly, it truly did. And I still to this day am just stunned by it. And it wasn't, I guess my point is, it, it wasn't like I'd put all these years into it and, and felt like I deserved it. You know, it was just sort of something that just was. It, it just was. I, I started to draw and, and realized that, that I could. And um, that is kind of a crazy thing. Um, and I certainly didn't take it for granted. I mean, I worked really, really hard um, because I knew that the opportunities that I was being given were remarkable and I did not want to disappoint anyone ever. 
So I worked really hard and um, and and did very well. And and that was kind of the start of everything. And and I also was given an opportunity to teach. And that was a real turning point for me because I never thought I could teach, you know. I'd, but all I did, I guess, was share um, share what what I loved and and what I was doing, and and tried to help other people find their own way to do the same, you know. And that that was sort of my my way of teaching. I just shared what I knew, and if I didn't know, I was honest about it. And and tried to find out, but um, it was one of the greatest surprises of my life because I had no idea how much I would love it, and it became the greatest gift, um, the teaching. So, so that was one thing, and and then within within that year, I was also um, given the opportunity to teach at Crapsy, um, which was also quite remarkable. And gosh, I don't know. I mean, um, it it just all happened very fast. So within a couple of years' time, I had had a solo exhibition, and I was teaching internationally. I had you know ten thousand students, I think, within the first year on Craftsy that took my classes, and so uh, it was pretty crazy. And not for one minute did I did I take it for granted. I just continued to work really hard. But I think, I think along the way, um, especially with teaching, what I've discovered is that I, I teach a lot of people and a lot of people that, that, that have that come perhaps with expectations and that you know, really feel like they want to learn how to draw or paint in a in a very realistic way, like like I started, and um, a lot of people get really frustrated because because they can't do it right away, you know, and it it from most of the time it takes people a lot of time to do that, and I don't know, I mean. It's tricky because I, I don't know why I could do it so quickly. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I certainly don't think it's anything that I can take credit for, except for once I realized it, I worked really hard um, at trying to get better. And so I didn't disappoint anyone. But I liken it to just the truth that like some human beings are born really beautiful, you know, like physically beautiful. And that's nothing that they did. They, it was just the luck of the draw and their genetics and they're really pretty, you know. Um, but I think over time, um, anyone, no matter how we're born, any of us can, can become beautiful because Pretty is something you're just born with, it's genetics, but, but beauty is something we earn, I think. You know, it's something we earn, and um, I, I think while I, I was given that, you know, so, somehow realized I had the, the, the ability to draw um, what, what, I could, what I saw, I worked really hard um, at, at nurturing that gift. You know, and so I think it's the same for everyone. We, you know, we might not all be given the ability right away to, to draw the way we want to, but we can work really hard at it. And that sort of leads me in, into the whole notion that I have of the how and the why. And the how is something we can all learn. The how in drawing, anyways, is is basically techniques we can learn on how to use our tools and materials to, to make to make marks on paper that help us portray what's in our mind and in our heart and what we see. And the how is something we can all learn. It is it, drawing is a skill. It is a skill, and a skill can be learned. But what we can't teach and what we can't learn is the why. 
and we all have a different why. You, I, I can sit down with with another artist, and and we each have the same exact tools and materials, and we each have been taught the same skills, the same set of hows, and and given the same subject, and and we will come out with two completely different drawings. And that comes from our why. And that's something that only we can discover for ourselves. And usually we discover it along the way as we're practicing the how. I hope that makes sense. But the how is something we can all learn um, and all share in common. But the why is something very specific to each of us. And some people will learn the how quicker than others. Some people... Um, are, are born with a very strong sense of the why and some of us it might take longer I feel like my why took a lot longer than my how you know and and so I feel sometimes like I haven't really found my true voice yet and I'm always working on that I'm always trying to nurture my why so I hope that makes sense I, I don't know but um, my main message is, is that if you want to do something, you have to work on the how, and you have to show up, and you have to do it every day. But if you um, if you already know what your why is, that's wonderful. But that's the thing that we really have to spend time with is our why. Why do we want to do this? Do we want to do it to relax and and experience the joy of color and the experience of putting ink on paper and and holding a precious piece of nature in our hand and and trying to draw it the best we can on paper so we really learn about this. You know, we we get to spend the time and and really learn drawing teaches us so much about our subjects, you know. Um so, so we have to each do that work on our own. And it's really important work. It's really, really important work. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. I don't know, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it again and again, I'm sure, <laughs> as I do these videos. Because it, it really is important to me for myself. And so, you know, as someone who wants to share what I know and what I'm learning and, and what I'm thinking about with others, um, you know, it's natural for me to want to share these thoughts, and, and I hope they make some kind of sense. I really do. So the other thing is, is that not all of us have the desire um, to be a draftsman or, or someone who creates art, as well as a Rembrandt or a Van Gogh or... Um, a Michelangelo or a Leonardo da Vinci. Not all of us have the desire to put that kind of time in um, to, to refine our skills that much and refine our vision that much. But we still might have the desire to create art. And so I have found from talking to people and, and from, from having workshops and classes and stuff that a lot of people um, really want to create art but they're afraid um, to, to commit to trying because they don't want to put that kind of time in or they don't have that kind of time um, and and maybe you know they just really they just really don't feel the need to to involve themselves in that kind of depth of study you know to to get to that point and so that they just don't even try they don't even attempt it and I guess my whole argument with that is is how good do we have to be at something to really enjoy it or benefit from it I don't think very good <laughs> I have always wanted to play the cello and while I have taken lessons and I've rented cellos and I've spent time trying to learn you know I just um, the how just wasn't coming for me I knew my why um, but the how just just wasn't something that I was going to get much better at no matter how much time I put in and that was fine because I could still enjoy pulling the, the bow across the strings and feeling the music in my chest cavity as I lean the instrument against my chest I can still enjoy it and truly benefit from it even from just playing a few notes in a simple song I can also benefit from it um, from listening to uh, others play the cello you know I mean those kinds of things um, we may not always have 
the, the, you know, the kind of skill level with the how that we would need to match the reasons why we want to do it. But that shouldn't deter us, you know. Luckily, drawing is quite different than cello in, in many ways. And I, I have seen, I, I've never seen anyone who couldn't draw if they put their mind to it and put the time in. I mean, we can all draw, we can all sit with something and really look at it and try to make marks on paper. And, and while I'm doing this and talking, I never talk when I draw, I'm usually silent. And so this is a very different experience for me because I feel like I'm not really present um, with my drawing and, and I can see that on, on my paper. Um, so, so that's another part of drawing too. When we draw and we're really drawing to learn how to see, we need to sit in silence with our work. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to just sit here and talk to you while I do nothing. So I thought I would try to draw, but I'm noticing how difficult it is for me to, um, to really pay attention to what I'm doing and talk at the same time. It's almost impossible, I think. Um, so yeah, it, you know, how good do we really have to be? I, I don't know, but I, I can guarantee you this, that if you really want to draw, or you really want to paint and you just show up every day and you do it with an open heart and with a sense of joy and and you, you just keep doing it every day you will learn and you, and your your how will get better and better your how will get better and better and your why you are nurturing just by showing up and you will discover what your why is very strongly you you really will so the how and the why they're really inseparable when, when we're creating art. They're really in, in, inseparable concepts. We need them both to create art. We can have the how be technically perfect. You know, you look at scientific illustrators and they learn specific techniques so they can draw this maple seed and it will look exactly like this. Those are strong how, you know, their skills. Um, their why might be this is their work and it's their job and so they have to recreate this exactly on a piece of paper and that's a tremendous skill to have but the why is something very different and and to create something in the spirit of creativity in the spirit of art we need both we really need both so i hope the things that i'm saying are encouraging you to start your own practice of of showing up to your work every day and really finding out um, and taking the time to discover what your why is, okay? And I don't, um, gosh, I just don't, you know, sometimes I, I feel so lucky, you know, I feel so lucky to be able to be doing what I'm doing and, and that makes me want to share it even more and it makes me um, so strongly believe in sharing the things that I love and that I've I've learned to do over time. And that's that's why I'm here. That's that's a big part of my why. So I hope that makes sense to you. Anyways, I won't keep you too much longer, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and would love to hear your thoughts. Um, you can always leave them in the comments below. And I also wanted to mention an author um, that I have been reading uh, over the past couple of weeks. I found one of his books and I immediately ordered three more. And his name is Frederick Franck. And I, you spell his last name F-R-A-N-C-K. And I highly recommend his book. Um, I think it's called Zen Seeing, Zen Drawing. Um, he talks a lot about the things that, that I've discovered over time. And when I read his book, I feel very affirmed, you know, in, in, in how I go about my drawing practice. And I highly recommend them. Um, and then the other, the other book that I really recommend is by Dan Danny Gregory, who is very different than Frederick Frank, but just as wonderful. And Danny's book that I love is called Creative License. And it's really all about teaching yourself how to see and how to draw. And, and that we all have that creative license to, to, to show up to our work every day and be creative people and have a creative practice and create art. And so both of those authors, I really strongly recommend and I hope you'll check them out. Um, but I think that's all for today. 
So until next time, I send you joy, and I really hope that you are um, you're starting your own creative practice, and I would love to hear from you about how you're going about that. All right, thanks so much for being here, as always. Thank you.